was a bumper week in the Aviva Premiership. And with Christmas just around the corner, fans were gifted with some thrilling rugby. Wasps began their new era in Coventry, whilst there was little in the way of seasonal goodwill in the Midlands and West Country derbies. The action began in howling conditions at the AJ Bell. With both Sharks and Chiefs flying high in the league, the visitors knew they would go top of the Premiership tree with victory in the North West. Sales started the brighter, with the pressure forcing Exeter lock Damian Welch into a yellow card offence. Chiefs went down to 13 as Ben White also saw yellow, but the Sharks were unable to capitalise on their numerical advantage, though Danny Cipriani did push them ahead just before half-time. They finally forged a way through the Chiefs' defence on 50 minutes, Cipriani finding Mark Cueto on the blind side for his 87th Premiership score and his third consecutive try against Exeter. Ansel went further ahead when Cipriani flew over the whitewash after a flowing move, but the mercurial fly-half injured himself in the process and had to limp off. Chiefs did threaten an unlikely comeback in the final minutes, Thomas Waldrum grabbing his eighth try in ten games, but it ended in a deserved victory for Steve Diamond's men. With only one win in four Premiership games, a victory was definitely on Quinn's Christmas list, and it was Tim Swill starting a top-flight match for the first time who got the hosts on the board. Newcastle's last win at the Stoop came in 2000, but the travelling support were given hope at the end of the first period, Alex Tuilangi driving over from close quarters for the North East outfit. In the second half, the momentum began to shift, and a glut of infringements from Newcastle allowed the host four penalties in quick succession. Swill's kicks would prove vital, as Newcastle had no answer. Far from a Christmas cracker, but for Quinns, a win was just what they wanted. More than two months since Saracens last won an Aviva Premiership game, but the European wins over Sale had restored some confidence, and by the end of this one, Allianz Park was awash with festive cheer, unless you were wearing pink, that is. Inside three minutes, Saris mauled 20 metres for Mako Vunipolo's benefit, and the scene was set. If Owen Farrell was looking for a decent workout after a difficult November with England, he certainly got his wish. One conversion and one penalty already landed by the time Brett Sharman burrowed over. That referral to the TMO was as tricky as things got for referee Ian Tempest, and Lock George Cruz kept the practice coming for Farrell, completing a hat-trick of tries for the home pack inside the first quarter. Inside half an hour and the bonus point was duly secured, for Nipola rolling off the back of a maul for try number four. Chris Ashton was on the score sheet next for the host, but a hugely predictable first 40 finished with a major twist as London Welsh scored. Lock Peter Brown making the ground, rugby league convert Elliot Keir accepting the offload. Tries from Jackson Ray, Richard Barrington, Ben Ransom, and a Richard Wigglesworth hat trick added insult to injury in the second half. More problems for Justin Burnell in what was the Exiles biggest defeat to date. An East Midlands showdown at Franklin's Gardens between Northampton and Leicester was always likely to be a feisty affair. Just 16 minutes in and the game had its first flashpoint. Dylan Hartley, all too often at the centre of controversial moments for Saints, involved once again. And the England hooker was shown an early red. Leicester then set about turning the screw from the scrum and at the fourth time of asking, rewarded a penalty try. Owen Williams would convert and two Stephen Myler penalties would follow for Saints to get them to within one, with Tom Croft also sent to the bin for the Tigers just before the break. Into the second half and Northampton would take full advantage of having equal players on the pitch, Alex Waller crashing over for the hosts. Both sides rung the changes and it would be Leicester back up to their full complement of 15 who would score next. Nicky Conover running in the simplest of scores. Saints continued to defy the odds though, and they would strike back once more. Ben Foden with a show and go to touch down for 16-12. Five minutes later and Gonover was over again in almost a carbon copy of his first. Freddie Burns made it 19-16 and with nine minutes to go and an extra man, it would seem for all the world as if Leicester could close out the game. Jamie Elliott had other ideas though, the substitute winger taking advantage of good hands from Myler and flying in to secure the most unlikely of wins for the champions. 
The Kings Home Faithful were hoping for an early Christmas present with a win over their West Country rivals Bath. The Cherry and White started with great tempo and passion and were rewarded with an early penalty for Greg Laidlaw. Five minutes later and Bath levelled the score with a milestone for New England fly half George Ford as he broke the 500 Premier League points barrier. With both sides having scrum problems, Gloucester's Silla Perfisi was shown the yellow card ten minutes into the second half. Bath made that extra man in the pack pay with a destructive driving maul forcing referee Greg Garner to award a penalty try after Gloucester had hauled it down. Bath scored another ten minutes later when replacement Matt Garvey drove over from close range. Gloucester did manage a consolation try when scrum half Dan Robson broke down the blind side just a minute after coming on. Bath's win was rubber stamped though when Garvey went over for his second try on the final whistle. The biggest ever win for them over their West Country rivals. It was a momentous day in the history of Wasps Rugby Club as they began life in a new home and a new city. The Rico Arena in Coventry was the setting as they took on formerly London rivals Irish. It was perhaps appropriate that a man born and bred in Coventry, Andy Goode, would get the first points for them at the stadium. Goode made it 6-0 soon after, but Irish were out to spoil the party and surprisingly were the first try scorers, taking full advantage of a failed Joe Simpson box kick, prop Jeff Cross on hand to crash over. Homer converted and he and Goode would exchange eight penalties before the break to see the visitors 18-16 up at half time. However, in the second period, Wasp really began to open up. A magnificent team try with wing Christian Wade heavily involved, eventually ending with Simpson flying in at the corner. Next, it was local boy Goode to score what will surely be a memorable try. That was followed by Elliot Daly somehow squeezing the ball over after Topsy Ojo had done his best to scupper the opportunity. With 80 minutes up and Wasp still in search of a bonus point try to put the icing on the cake, it was down to fullback Andrea Massey to do the honours. perfect ending to the perfect start for Wasps in their new home. So a look at the table sees reigning champions Northampton as this year's Christmas number one, having won eight of their ten games. Bath, just a couple of try bonus points light of the pace setters, will also be able to particularly enjoy their turkey with all the trimmings. Exeter and Saracens complete the top four. Sale's four-game winning streak has taken them to first spot in the queue just outside the playoff line. Wasps' bonus point win sees them leapfrog Quinns and the Tigers into sixth. And London Welsh's game against their fellow exiles and strugglers London Irish next weekend is already taking on a huge significance. Lose that one and it's hard to see a way out for the Welshmen. For all the latest Premiership action, subscribe to our official YouTube channel or log on to premiershiprugby.tv. Merry Christmas.